Hello and welcome, I'm Tom and welcome to today's video where I will be taking you through our coveted snapshot system. Okay, um, so as you might have seen on previous videos, I'll be taking you through the offline software and showing you basically all the controls and all the buttons, what they mean and how you can start using them inside your workflow. As with all the other videos that we've been providing, all of this is going to be up on our YouTube channel, so please go check that out. Um, all of our sort of latest videos are up available to view online, okay? Um, so if you're not familiar with using snapshots, then uh, stay tuned, grab yourself a brew, and uh, let's continue. So first of all, what are snapshots? Snapshots allow for complete desk recall of all parameters, essentially. So you can be using them for your set lists of your touring bands, um, recalling default patches, maybe at festivals or installations, um, and obviously uh, theater applications. But remember, we do have our own dedicated theater software, which you can activate on some SD consoles to provide you a very, very professional application for specific theater use, okay? The existing snapshot system though is incredibly comprehensive and you can use it pretty much for all applications and this is what we're going to be exploring today. So let's go create a snapshot. So first of all let's navigate to the offline software. We're running SD10 here today so just a remind everyone watching on SD10 you can go to your enable extensions and start using the theatre or broadcast versions of this software offline. So uh, get your head around that um, in this uh, bit of downtime that we all have. But for now, we're going to have a look at snapshots. So I'm going to just tap on this tab up here to open up the snapshots window. Now, currently there are no snapshots. I can create a new one by pressing this button. Equally, if you are on the work surface itself, you can press insert new and this window will also pop up. So this will allow us to create a, a new snapshot. Let's just call this snap one because you'll always be prompted to label your snapshot after you create it press enter and now I've created my first snapshot. So everything I've done on my session has now been saved essentially inside this snapshot. If I go and move a few parameters around, so let's put a few faders up for example, you'll now see that I have a star next to the number one. This tells me that there's a data change within the current snapshot. So what I want to do is save this into a brand new snapshot and insert new. So by inserting new you are saving the previous sort of uh, snapshot settings and bringing them forward into your brand new snapshot but also capturing the new pr uh, values of these faders so now I can go into fire previous and fire next and you'll see that these are changing so fundamentally that is what the snapshots are doing so let's go into snap 2 let's say I want to turn on some EQs onto this snapshot again you'll see this little star which is signified that there's been a data change I'm just going to update current because now I just want to update the current snapshot with those EQ ons for example but if I wanted to say change a few aux sends, maybe turn on a low pass filter and again turn on a few moots for example, I can actually save all of this inside a brand new snapshot by pressing insert new. So let me call this snap three. So there we go, we've got three snapshots straight away with three different bits of data changing. Okay, so fundamentally that is your snapshot and how you can make this work. Now what we're going to do is have a look around all this window and uh, have a good look at what these buttons can do for us um, because there's an extensive amount of control that we can apply to our snapshot system uh, if we need to okay so first of all global scope this window will allow you to select particular parameters from ever updating globally so we have our rows of channel types um, along the side here and then the columns will show us a recall and update uh, option available. So a red cross means that parameter will not recall and a green tick means that it will do. So for example if I find my input channels and turn off my mute recall for example when I fire previously into my next or previous snapshots you'll see that the mutes will now not update. Okay so if I go back into my global scope recall these back in again my mutes will now update. Okay. So we'll go back into global and put this back on. So the update column um, basically determines which controls are included when auto update is activated. And at the bottom of the window, you'll find some global options for your snapshots recall total gain, MIDI, general purpose output relays and waves. So essentially make sure that there are ticks here to enable these on. Just a little bit about the snapshots recalls total gain option. 
it's important to have this turned on if you are sharing stage boxes uh, between multiple consoles. So when a snapshot recalls an input trim, so if you, you know fire different input trim at the top of the channel, it will look, compare the snapshot's analog gain against the current gain on the channel's input socket. So if there is a difference, it offsets the value recalled by the trim, so you're not having multiple consoles firing different trim values. So this will also only ever happen if the uh, socket's rack is in receive only um, or the analog game is not in the recall scope, okay? So essentially, if you are sharing stage boxes between consoles, make sure that this is turned on to not affect the global gain and trim settings, okay? So make sure you also have this turned back on before you move forward. So that is your global scope. Next, we have our notes. These will change per snapshot to keep you updated with whatever information you need to add in. So for example, if we go to our first snapshot, we could have uh, our show begin note. Um, and then for our second note on our next snapshot, we could say uh, watch for actor, Ooh, would help if I had this, watch for actor stage left, for example. So we can also look to format this, we can go into our style and here we can actually basically save our custom colours, change the size and text of uh, the labelling as well as the background colours if we need to, we can add the colour as we see fit. Okay, So we can change the brightness to see our different colour palettes on the go there. So again this can be utilised per snapshot just so you can keep up to date with what's going on and give you some nice obvious indications of when things need to be adhered to. You'll also note that you've got your uh, snapshot name as well as the active scope, so basically what is activated um, within the current snapshot system. So when we start activating our crossfades, our recalls and stuff like this, you'll see that you'll have little indicators appear which will tell us that when we fire into a particular snapshot we'll have some particular changes occurring. So when we get further in you'll see this in a bit more detail. So coming out of this we then get into groups you can apply updates to all snapshots that make up a particular scene in a play or a particular song in a set list using the groups uh, window. Okay, um, So I will be going over this in a bit more detail later on. Next option you have is the locked. So this is quite useful. This will prevent the snapshot from updating or from being deleted. So I can go into this, try and select the snapshot, but my confirm tick isn't activating here. Okay, so make sure that, that locked isn't on. The duration timer will become activated when we actually turn this on again within the scope menu. We'll have a look at this a bit later as well. Skip to previous and next basically means that when you come onto this particular snapshot, the recall will ignore it. So again, if I go fire previous and next, you'll see that it is now currently skipping snapshot two. The scope button opens up all the extra options that we have for our snapshots, so we will have a look at all of these in some detail a little bit later on. At the very bottom on the on this side we have the control by MIDI and update waves only options too. So update waves only will only be viewable if it's actually activated on the console, so this is just pressed to send snapshot updates to waves. Control by MIDI allows the firing of snapshots via incoming MIDI messages. So by default, these are set up on MIDI channel 16. So you can see channel 16, value 0, 1 and 2 already assigned to these particular snapshots. So to set this up, you can press MIDI received via snapshot. Okay. So not only can this be set up to be controlled by MIDI, but you can also set up each snapshot to output the same MIDI commands. So you can set this up again by doing fire snapshot sends MIDI. So this can be set up in addition to any extra commands within the MIDI list, which we will come on to a bit later on. So up on screen now you're going to see some default states for your uh, MIDI selections. Um, so these are active essentially when you turn these options on. Okay. So at the top of the window you can actually change the value. So if you select it on here you can change it to any other value which is still available. Clear removes the MIDI message associated with that snapshot. And that's essentially what you need to look at for your snapshot controls by MIDI. So come into here for the basic setup and turn this on. We will come on to the MIDI list within the scope and MIDI programming a bit later on. Okay, So on to the right hand side, we then get into the other options available. So next to insert new we have duplicate. So you can duplicate an existing snapshot which is a great tool if you wanted just to rehearse some edits or changes to a particular snapshot within your show. 
you have the update group option, which you haven't had a look at because you haven't had a look at the update current. So this is activated when you have groups of snapshots. Update selected applies any changes made to the selected snapshot. So for example, if I'm on snapshot three, but I could actually look to change options on snapshot one. So if I turned off these EQs, for example, and turn all four off, I can then go update selected snapshot. And then when I fire into this particular snapshot, you'll see that these EQs have all been turned off. Okay, so that's what update selected will do for you. Edit range allows us to select a range of snapshots to update at the same time. So this is an extremely useful tool that can uh, write wholesale changes into all of your snapshots. So for example, you know, you might have a special guest that's popped up. Let's say we've got a special guest on uh, our channels down here, so channel 31. You can now, with all your snapshots selected, go make your changes, go patch in that special guest from whatever local inputs you have left available in your session, turn on your EQs, etc, etc. Apply this update to all your snapshots within your list and hit confirm. Okay, so now when we fire through, you'll see that I have this brand new input channel in across my snapshots. Okay, so that's what the edit range can do for you. It's very useful. And again, you can select all, or you can actually go select just a few channels within, uh, or a few snapshots, sorry, within the range to edit. Below edit range, we can actually access the move, rename, renumber, and delete options. So move, you can move the snapshots in their current order. So for example, maybe your set list has to change per gig, and you wanna be moving your snapshots or your, your songs around. So essentially all you need to do, select move, you then have an option to select the range. So what you want to do is say from, uh, if it's just a single snapshot that you need to move, go select your single snapshot, and then you're going to select your destination. So you're going to insert this snapshot, say before snapshot number one. So now snapshot number three is the first song of the first uh, of of the gig, and now you want to move that snapshot, and it has now been moved, as you can see. So the name is now at the top, and you'll also see that the numbers have changed as appropriately. Okay. Below this, we have rename. So as the as the option suggests, you can rename a, a snapshot as you need to by coming into this window. Uh, renumbering will allow you to change the snapshot number. So now, since I've moved this snapshot, you'll see that it's now divided itself, um, and we want to put this into whole integers again. So all we need to do is select renumber. And you're going to go from number 0 0.5 to 4 in steps of 1 and you, all you need to do is press renumber. So now we have this back in order. So if you are moving snapshots around or inserting new snapshots within your list, then you'll see the numbers starting to change. To put them back into whole integers, go into renumber. And delete, as the name suggests, allows you to delete a single or range or all snapshots. Okay. Below this, we have our soft buttons. So this allows us to essentially, you know, as you've noticed me pressing, fire previous, five next, um, or I can undo my previously fired snapshot. So again, as the name suggests, it will allow me to go back into my previous snapshot straight away if I didn't mean to fire it. <coughs> okay, so these are soft buttons. These are replicated on the hardware as it is. Below this, we have view options. So view options allows us to make the rows smaller or larger and it also allows us to activate touch to fire. So if I have this turned on, you'll now see that actually I'm firing my snapshots by just tapping them on screen. Let me just go change this back into bank one so you can see a bit of information changing, as you can see, okay? So touch to fire means that tapping on the row will now automatically fire that snapshot. Backgrounds, you have your brightness, so default is uh, is set here but if you want to invert the colors you can do just to make it a bit easier to see if you prefer dark or lighter text you can also use the notes color for the text as well so anything that you've set up in your notes section here can be assigned to the color of your snapshots okay so I'm just gonna make sure that touch the fire is off and I'm gonna put this back into large okay below this option then we have auto update so auto update is really quite useful so if I'm on snapshot two at the moment, we already know that if I move a snapshot, uh, a parameter, a fader, wh whatever parameter I'm changing, I'll get a change in that current snapshot of which I would want to press update current. With auto update on, if I make any changes, you'll see that there is no star appearing against this snapshot. This is because it is automatically updating the snapshot with all the new parameters that I am touching. 
So auto update can be extremely useful for your sound checks, your initial rehearsals, because all you need to do is insert a new snapshot, label it as you need to label it, and turn auto update on. Now you just mix to what is on the stage. <clears throat> you don't need to worry about pressing update current, you don't need to worry about updating your current snapshot, you just mix what is front in what is in front of you. At the end of that song, you can then press insert new to then move on to the next song. So having auto update on can be extremely useful for you. And remember the auto update <coughs> global scope is being affected by what you have ticked here as well. Okay. So if there's a tick in this option, then when auto update is activated, these parameters will be updating in real time. Okay. So auto update is extremely useful. Turn this on and off. You will generally have a work surface button for this as well, so which you can apply as you need to. Okay, obviously make sure you have this turned off if you don't want to be updating things automatically. Okay, and then below this we have relative groups. So this will allow us to change the behavior of our grouped snapshots in between relative and non-relative group updates. We will be covering this in a bit more detail a little bit later on as well. Okay, so essentially that is the snapshot window. Okay, those are all the options available. What we're now going to do is go and explore the scope tab now and see what all these options can do for us. So the first option we have available is the recall scope. This offers complete recall of each individual parameter per channel per snapshot. So remember if you have the global scope to recall certain parameters, the recall scope can effectively change these states per snapshot. Okay. So essentially we're looking at per snapshot recall rather than the overall global control. So you'll see that we have some columns here that will have some information on and then the rows which are the channel types. Okay. So for example, if you look at your input trim column, you know this changes uh, sort of a little bit between your channel types. So, for example, across your local I/O and rack input information, for example, your local input slash trim options will contain your analog gain switches and phantom power. But if we look at your input trim on input channels, for example, this will contain input route, the digital trim, phase, channel name, and tube settings aux, groups, matrix outputs, things like this will contain digital trim, phase, delays, bus name and tube settings. Input trim on your matrix inputs for example will just contain input routes, matrix input name and tubes. You know, if you apply delay filters EQ for example this will apply to all channel types where you'll have your delay filters, high pass, low pass, filter, recalls and EQ. So basically all your EQ recalls except your high pass and low pass filters for example. Okay, So open up your inputs just to start applying these parameter changes to individual channels. At the very bottom of the window you'll notice that we have control group members, gangs, banks and waves. So these are the options that you need to have turned on if you want these to be changing per snapshot. So for example per control uh, per snapshot I can have different control group members updating. So this is a very useful tool especially if you're working with control groups and you need to have different um, members updating per snapshot so different actors coming in on the same faders essentially. So make sure that you have this turned on and this applies to your gangs and the banks options as well. I'll have a look at this via control groups. So I have my control group members turned on on snapshot number two and then I want to go down to snapshot number one and I'm just going to go double check that this is also set on snapshot number one which it is not. So you can see that this isn't set. Now this is activated we have the active scope. So let me just go into my center bank bring up my control groups. So let's say on uh, on the next snapshot, on snapshot number two, we actually want to drop one of these guitars and maybe add in a bit of reverb or something like this. So essentially what we're going to do is go join slash leave. I'll go find my guitar members just to make sure that they are changing. So first of all, I'm going to do this on snapshot number two. So make sure I'm in the snapshot number two here. You see some other members updating there. And then we could actually say we're going to go join slash leave, go find my guitar lead channel again. So it is over here and we're actually going to take that out of the snapshot in snapshot number two. If we go back into center, you'll see that this is now updated. And along with this new uh, control group, which was uh, put there just to make sure that you were seeing following this change, you'll see that this is updated. So first of all, you'll see that I've got a star. Make sure that you press update current in order for the changes to be registered. And now you'll notice that when I go fire previous and next, that I'll have my control group members change on control group three and control group five. Okay, and that is because we have this set up on the recall scope. 
you see this icon, then you know that something's going to change within the control group members. And as we start adding in more parameters, you'll see that these uh, little icons will start uh, populating. By default, because we have waves turned on, we're always going to have this waves active scope uh, available. Um, so even if you're not changing anything on those outputs uh, to or uh, to the wave systems, then this will still be showing up as as active. Okay, so that is the recall scope. Below the recall scope, we have the group and auto update scope. So this window will allow you to set how group updates will affect your snapshot system. It has a similar look to your global and recall scope and you have the name and number of the snapshot indicated at the top of the window. So changes in control group membership and gangs are also included um, and these are actively um, recallable uh, to begin with. Um, so the way that you want to be using this window is you want to set this up if you're using group updates of, of your snapshots. Okay, So do this first before you then move on to say your recall scope. But equally remember you don't always have to be using this particular function um, and actually for most common applications of the snapshot system global scope should be sufficient okay however you know if you need the extra flexibility and advanced settings this is what you can do with the group and auto updates okay so before we have a quick look at that let's just go quickly revisit the uh, groups tab because the groups tab uh, we had a quick look at earlier but this is where you would actually want to come in and start setting up your groups of snapshots. Um, so if we go into a new group, for example, I can call this maybe uh, scene one, and I can start grouping up all the snapshots that I currently have in this particular scene, um, which basically means that if I had all my initial four snapshots, I can now go make my group changes, which has now become available, and apply them all to the snapshots making up scene one, which is really quite useful. So before I do anything further with this, I'm just going to add in some new snapshots here. Just change a bit of the look just so you can follow and update what is going on. So I'm going to go add in a new snapshot here. Um, and just for speed of use, we'll just ignore the labeling for now. But a few other options here, which hopefully you find quite interesting to see. I'm going to go to global set to defaults. And I'm just going to go set up a few snapshots with some generic values on. So for example, faders at 0 dB. So input channels, all faders to 0 dB. And you can see that this has all been set at the bottom now. So I'm just going to go to update current. And then I'm going to go to insert new. And again, all input channels, let's have my faders off. Okay, I'm going to go update current, insert new. And don't worry, there is slight method to the madness. Um, so up uh, faders to zero dB again, update current, and we'll just do one more where the faders are off, and we'll update current again. Okay, so essentially what you're going to have is a few snapshots now, and snapshot number uh, the numbers number eight is faders are, are off, snapshot number seven faders at zero dB, snapshot number six faders are off. That's snapshot number five, faders at zero dB. And then snapshot number four, the faders are as they were on snapshot number three, or slightly similar anyway, okay? So what I'm now gonna do is go add in the other snapshots into a new group. So maybe these could be seen two snapshots, for example. This is a really, really useful way of just isolating your updates to specific snapshots. Okay, so let's say I've got my uh, snapshots five, six, seven, and eight into this scene two group. So now what, what I'm going to do is select this to add um, my updates to. Options here, so I could actually merge um, my two sets of groups together if I needed to. And that means I can apply updates to all eight snapshots if I required. Rename, obviously, and delete as the name suggests. Change members means that you can change your members actively in between your different groups. So I've made these particular groups and now I can actually start applying updates to these particular groups. Now at the very top of the window, if we just come and move this slightly, um, you are going to see that we can actually start applying our updates relatively or non-relatively. Okay, So this is one of the things that the group updates will allow you to do. Now, blue means that we are in a non-relative update. Red means we are in a relative update. So we can change the functions here as required, okay? 
So just to remind you, I'm on groups. I'm looking at scene two groups of five, six, seven, and eight. So let's just go find number, number five so we can start. So in a non-relative group update or an absolute group update, what will happen in the snapshot systems is changes are only applied to the other snapshots in my group if the controls that are being changed have the exact same value. So that was the reason why I went and put all the values at zero dB, because if I start changing this now, um, and indeed if I hold my uh, control, I can now do my control all across all my faders there, I can move these down off zero dB into their new positions. But if I go press update group in my non-relative group update mode, you'll now see that the star has disappeared, but what has actually happened? If we go far through the next snapshots, so just snapshot number six, the faders haven't actually changed because they were from an off position. And if you remember, I started the original value at zero dB, or there or there around. But when I go into snapshot number seven, you'll see that the updates have been, up, uh, that have been fired into the snapshot. And if I go into snapshot number eight, you'll see that these have not been updated again because the starting value was not at zero dB. So that is the first type of group update, it's actually a non-relative group update. So the value has to be on the exact same starting position across your snapshots for it to change. Relative groups do not require a similar starting point as the name suggests, it is just a relative group update. So for example, in this snapshot, if I move the fader up by 10 dB, push this fader up by 10 dB and I hit update group, then those two faders will have plus 10 dB written into them across all of my grouped snapshots, okay? So if I come into here, even though you won't see too much change at the bottom of the channel, if I actually press on the value here, you'll see it's now come off from off position, whereas the others haven't, okay? So it has updated by 10 dB, but it's just the fact that your, um, your scale is obviously massively uh, reduced compared to the top due to our lovely DB values. Okay, so those are the two types of group updates that you can be um, looking to apply to your snapshots. So the relative group updates really do sort of target the DB value. So if you're updating anything without a DB value, so maybe dynamic times, EQ frequencies, you know, pans, these actually still behave non-relatively. So if you are in relative group update and you change a pan value, then this will actually only update across the other snapshots if the pan value starts at the exact same point. Okay, so that is your groups of snapshots. Um, that is your relative and non-relative group updates. And that's how you're setting them up. So again, groups, new group, and change members, group up those snapshots together to make it abundantly easier to make your updates. Below group and auto update scope, we have the crossfades. Okay, so let's go set some of these up. So on my selected snapshot, so snapshot number six, I can choose any of these parameters to essentially add a crossfade to. Okay, so for example, I can look to set across all my channel types a fade a crossfade by selecting the top of the channel. I can do individual crossfades per channel by opening up my inputs, for example, and selecting them appropriately. Or I could just go click on here and apply all input channels with a particular crossfade. So I can select the column, individual channel, or type of channel through this window. So for example, if I went and made a crossfade time uh, of, let's say, uh, five seconds. So when I then fire from snapshot five into snapshot six, we will see a crossfade. So here's snapshot five's fade positions. Let's go into fire snapshot number six. You'll see that the crossfades and the faders have now gone down, as you can see, okay? So that is how we are firing a crossfade into our selected snapshots. On top of this, you can also look to set a faders and panners wait time. So just the faders and panners uh, options will be affected by this. But if I went into my fader control again and set a say a two second wait time, this now means that when I fire into snapshot number six again, so if I go fire previous and fire next, we'll have a two second wait and then the crossfade will activate. Okay, so this can be really useful if you needed to automate panning uh, sequences or things like this at different times to when you actually fire into the snapshot. Okay, so that is the crossfades um, and that is your faders and panners wait time.
and here's the fade time. You can change this into decimals as well if this is preferable for your initial setups. Okay. The next option to see is the recall times. So I use this to automate snapshots to fire in sequence. So we'll open up the tab and this is what you get. So your first two columns that we'll focus on are the duration and active column. Okay. Um, so essentially what you want to do is if you wanted to automate the snapshot to last a certain amount of seconds, tick on the active column and then go set the appropriate amount of seconds. So if it's a five second uh, snapshot, actually we've got a crossfade going in there haven't we plus a wait so if I add this and made it seven seconds that would make more sense then this snapshot will last for seven seconds so when I fire this particular snapshot okay we'll then have the duration timer going down and then it will go fire automatically into snapshot number seven after it is finished okay so that is what the recall times essentially will do for you coming back into this window what I can actually also do is activate recall ads um, so this allows you to set a specific time code value to fire the snapshot. So if you're using um, the desks on board time code, um, so that could be the transport control, which is located in the layout, then transport control option uh, here. I'll just bring this up to the screen. Or you could be using external time code via MIDI uh, time code coming into the back of the desk. So remember on an SC7 you've got a SIMT dedicated in. Um, all the other consoles are MTC enabled. So what you would look to do first of all is go to your time code in transport on your setup. Make sure you've got this, the correct frame rate and the fact that you've actually got your time code source set to MIDI, not necessarily master. For my example, I'll leave it at master. But if you are externally using MIDI, obviously make sure that this is set as your source. If you're sending it back out to MIDI and uh, your machine control devices as well. Okay, so I'm just going to leave this on master. But if we are using MTC to fire our snapshots, make sure that this is set as the time code source. So what this now means is if I come back into Regal Times on this column, I'm actually just going to put that this particular snapshot, snapshot number seven, is going to fire after four seconds so just to highlight this if I go back into snapshot number one open up my layout tab go to transport control hit play you'll now see that when it gets to the fourth second we will fire automatically into snapshot number seven okay so this is what the regal times can do for us in addition to this you actually have this capture recall times option so what this means if I have this turned on and I have my time code uh, reader active, so my transport control, for example. If I now press insert new, bang, as you can see, and now I just stop this and I turn this active, you'll see that I've actually captured the time code stamp into my new snapshot. So if you are doing initial setups, this can be really useful if you are rehearsing with your time code source coming in to then start setting up snapshots at the specific time capturing the correct time code stamp. Okay. So that is your recall times. And again, frames and decimals available for your display if required. If I leave capture recall times active, then when I come into my snapshots window, this icon will tell me it is still turned on. So coming out of recall times, we then get into our MIDI options, our MIDI list and MIDI programs. So essentially, if you wanted to set up additional MIDI commands to output with your snapshots, then this is the list that you want to be using. However, when we are looking at MIDI, there's a few things we want to sort of look at first, i.e. setting up the devices. Now, when you come into this window and set up your devices, then all your labeled receiving devices will then pop up, making it just a lot easier to see as to what is going on. So you can either find your MIDI devices through your snapshot MIDI list or come into your MIDI program option down here and activate devices. So by default, you have the SD console's uh, built-in MIDI port on port A and you have 16 channels. So what you want to do is set the name for your receiving devices. So what, whatever they may be, so maybe we've got a drum pad um, and then maybe down here we've got a synth and then potentially we might have a poly, something going along the lines on our third MIDI port. Okay, so this column uh, basically represents whether your receiving devices are set to the values of 0 to 1 to 7 or 1 to 1 to 8. So 1 indicates that your receiving devices will receive MIDI notes 1 to 1 to 8. 0 means it will receive 0 to 1 to 7. 
okay? The column marked change, or C-H-N-G, is for changing where the program changes are only sent when they are different to the last message, or whether they are always sent irrespective of the last message. So select Y for the former, essentially. Clear the PC, the button at the bottom here will always ensure that the next message will be sent as it will clear the program change. Now we have a few MIDI devices uh, listed. Uh, what we want to now do is have a look at the MIDI program changes and list window to see what is, you know, the, the further development of this, okay? So MIDI program changes. In this window, there's a column for all 16 program changes and uh, channels on port A, and a row for each existing snapshot. Okay, so what I can do is on each existing snapshot on all of my um, controllers, I can start adding in a particular value. So maybe I needed to output MIDI note uh, 100 um, and on our, my first receiving device, so my A1, which is my drum pad. Okay, similarly, I can use my value options down here to change what MIDI note I'm or MIDI program change I'm outputting on this particular snapshot. Now if I want this to occur, make sure that you have this tick. If it's not on, then these messages will not be sent out. Okay. Now I could actually ripple down these changes by having this option there. Um, so if I go and select a new snapshot, you'll see that I've now s automatically assigned this MIDI note message to trigger on A1 across all my snapshots. Now this will be copied across to all consecutive snapshots that has the same value or have no value essentially, hence why that we now have uh, uh, the MIDI note number five being sent across all of them. So we now can view these MIDI program changes essentially um, in the MIDI list window. Um, so this will allow for further editing um, of your MIDI messages. So if we go into MIDI list, we'll now see on this particular window that we have on these output devices, the drum pad on port, port A, channel one, sending out a PC command at those particular values. Okay, so this has all been set up from the previous window. If I come back into MIDI program, maybe on A2, I want to gonna have a snapshot value of maybe number eight. Okay, and let's just see what this looks like on the next MIDI list window. So this will now show me that I've got MIDI output messaging going out on my drum pad and synth, synth ports of those particular values. Okay, so you can test the MIDI messages by pressing the send value. This will send a MIDI note out message, as you can see. And uh, this is very useful when you do have this set up from a practice or rehearsing point of view, just to ensure that your receiving devices are receiving the correct messages. Now, you can see at the bottom that we have a, a key uh, here, so you can actually see the different commands that you might be wanting to change in addition to your existing commands. So if I wanted to add extra commands here, I can insert and I can actually start changing for my different ports and, and channels if I needed to. So maybe this one is going out onto channel three, which is my polysynth. And then I actually want to send a CC value maybe instead of a program change. And I can set the appropriate note and velocity values for this, okay? So that is your MIDI list and your MIDI program and how you're going to be setting this up. So remember, go to devices first, change these, make sure that this is all set up correctly. If you then want to set out your program changes, you can come into this window to change your options. Again, you can disable this if you need to as well. And then in addition to that, you can add further MIDI commands by coming into your MIDI list and adding insert. One of the quickest ways, I have to say, regarding this in terms of saying this is, is that actually come into the capture window capture will mean that if you have the output of your receiving device coming on to the input port on the sd console all you would actually need to do across your selected snapshot is press on the receiving device the midi note this is then captured directly into this midi list message making it a lot easier to set this up because you've already captured the note at the source okay um that is your MIDI list programming essentially, okay? And this is what you can do to change it. Now below my MIDI program option, I have my general purpose output relays. So this allows me to automatically set out some triggers on my general purpose uh, 25 pin D sub connectors on SD10, or I could have a quarter inch jack connector on my SD11, SD9, for example. So what you can do is highlight your snapshot and say, I wanna send out a general purpose output note on or a pulse. So click once for the on, 
double click for the pulse so that's an on and off value okay make sure that this is obviously set to recall on your global scope as well otherwise your general purpose outputs will not be recalling but essentially what this means now is every time i come into snapshots at 7.5 if i fire previous and actually before i do this i'm just going to go to system i'm just going to bring up to the surface my general purpose io relays because this now means that if i go fire previous we'll have my countdown or my timer going as you can see which will fire into snapshot number seven and then when i fire from snapshot number seven into snapshot number 7.5 you'll see that my output messages have activated as appropriately, okay? So the pulse is the dash down the middle and an on value is the solid color, okay? So this can be automatically set up with the recall times to start firing out general purpose output messages um, to trigger external equipment, okay? So that is essentially how you are setting this up, general purpose output relays and select the appropriate boxes. Now the very bottom of the window, we get to the transport control. So this is quite a useful window because snapshots can be programmed to send MIDI machine control or MMC uh, messaging out. Um, so this allows for external control of uh, playback devices essentially. So this window will uh, allow you to add per snapshot the listed MMC con commands essentially. So you've got play, which is your basic play command. So your external device will play from a current location. You've got play from where the external device will play from a specified time value, play to, you know, where it will play up to, um, locate to, external device will locate to specified time, and then stop, so that is your basic stop function. In order for this to work efficiently, we do need to have a correctly configured MIDI system set up with MTC uh, connected to the console's MIDI input. If no MTC connection is present, then this option will not work, okay? So make sure that you have uh, MTC coming into the desk and then you use use this transport control to set up appropriately. So there we have it. There's the overview of the snapshot window. Hopefully you can uh, take a bit more information away with you after watching this um, and start implementing some of these snapshot features inside your workflow. Um, just to point out though, you know, you don't have to use everything inside the snapshot system. Um, it's just good to know that if you, if and when you do need to go down the advanced route for your setups, you have all the facilities under the sun uh, in, within the Digico Central system to implement your complicated or advanced uh, scene changes or song changes or set lists or changes or things like this. Everything you can use the snapshot system for. One thing just to point out, you will also find on the work surfaces um, this extra feature called work surface offline. Um, essentially what this will allow you to do is disconnect the engine, the audio engine from the work surface. So it means that you can actually, once you've enabled this feature, start moving faders up and down on the work surface without affecting the audio coming into the audio engine. This is a really valuable tool so that snapshots can be previewed, adjusted and updated without affecting your current audio uh, stream in your current snapshot. You can take the surface offline, you can make any changes to your snapshots and then press return to audio button which will then take you back into your current snapshot as well as having the audio being affected at that point, okay? One thing to point out with this feature is it doesn't stop any external time code or pause any external time code. So make sure you do have this feature available to pause as and when you need to, okay? But from me, it's been an absolute pleasure as always to take you through the snapshots window today. Um, hopefully uh, all your questions have been answered, but please feel free to ask any, uh, any more um, as we stay live uh, for a few more minutes. As always, please check out our YouTube video, um, our YouTube videos and our YouTube channel where you can access all of our latest content. Um, we do have quite a fair bit of great stuff coming now. So please check on there just to keep up to date with all the latest and greatest. Okay, until next time, it's been a pleasure. Cheers.